Hello, welcome to Sweet Savage Flame. I'm your host, Jacqueline Diaz, and today we'll be talking about book reviews. And in particular, we'll be reviewing Johanna Lindsay's Define Not the Heart. Now, Define Not the Heart is a book that we have reviewed on SweetSavageFlame.com. And if you want to get the transcript of this, I recommend going to our website to check that out. Uh, Now, absolutely, this is one of my favorite books of all time. So it is a five-star read. And I just want to say that this review will have some spoilers. So just uh, if you don't want spoilers, don't check the review, but read the book. I certainly recommend that. Now, Johanna Lindsay, the author of this book, was the um, one of the most phenomenal and best-selling romance novelists of all time. Uh, for a while, except for maybe Jude Devereaux, there was no other mass-market author in the 1980s to the 1990s whose prolific writing achieved such commercial success as Joanna Lindsay. She had a bestseller all the time. Uh, she reached number one on the New York Times bestseller list with The Find Not the Heart. During this time period in the 1980s and 90s, Lindsay was at her peak, and in a span of 10 to 15 years, she put out book after book with the absolute best covers that, for a few exceptions, were really great, fun reads and they rank among my most beloved romances. I know I'm very superlative when I talk about Joanna Lindsay, but she is a superlative author. You know, she was not perfect, but she was so much fun. Now for the plot. And to find out the heart, Ranald Fitzhugh is a bastard mercenary knight, and he's simply just working on another job. He is to kidnap Lady Raina de Champenay and bring her to her supposed betrothed man, Lord Rothwell, who is an elderly man whose Raina ha- actually has never met before in her life. And Raina, being a very sensible girl, once she's kidnapped, she realizes the situation she's in, and especially as a married woman. So since Rothwell hasn't paid Ranulph for his services yet and his claim to her is absolutely false, why doesn't Ranulph marry Raina herself? She's a wealthy heiress, so such a union would make Ranulph a wealthy lord. A marriage of convenience takes place. Then the two seemingly different spouses settle into married life. And what goes on is really, really amazing in this book. I've read readers complain how little interaction Ranulph and Raina have with each other. Uh, and perhaps because Lindsay sometimes, she she has a penchant for making her characters constantly fight. I, I think this scarcity in this in this book is a good thing. Like, uh, it's it's good that they're not together all the time. Their plot scenes with other their scenes with other parts of the plot, and the scenes with Ranulph and Reyna are all the more memorable for that, from their first interaction, when after waiting hours to meet the lady of the castle who's invaded, Ranulph was so impatient he unknowingly picks up an armor-clad Reyna and throws her to the floor. And she starts to crack some jokes about the housekeeping. I mean, how, I believe uh, about how the rushes need cleaning. And there's a lot of sexy bedroom antics um, with light bondage and spanking punishments. And I know that sounds a little uh, sounds a little vanilla for today, but they were very controversial at the time. Define out the heart combines some of my favorite tropes to make this a truffle bacon cheese and macaroni comfort read there's nothing more delicious nothing more of a guilty pleasure than this but uh, you know what i really don't feel any guilt about loving this book because it's filled with such wonderful characters let's talk about the hero radolf 
Ranulph is a brute. He is a knight with no time for chival chivalry. He's banging slutty fat chicks. He parties with his buds. He pisses wherever he likes. He is an all-around ill-mannered boar. But uh, the secret is he's insecure. He's a very beautiful man. It's blonde hair, violet eyes, so handsome that women chase him wherever he goes. You know, nevertheless, I, despite all that, he has never really received any genuine affection or love from a woman in his rough life. As an illegitimate, illegitimate son of a noble lord, since birth, Ranulph had to fight for own for his everything that he owned. So if he finished that one last job to kidnap an unmarried heiress and bring her to her supposed fiancé, that would have enabled him to buy great lands and show off his father for once and for all. But Reyna's offer of marriage was impossible to resist. Reyna is one of Lindsay's best heroines, which is not a hard feat to achieve considering how many caustic a lot of them are. She's not your typical beautiful, stunning heroine. She's short, plain looking, and except for her pretty bright blue eyes. Her charms are her brains and her ability to lead. But she's no shrinking violet. She's a no-nonsense girl who will pull up her sleeves to protect her castle and her people. She's witty, and yeah, she gets a little prissy, but she's no shrew. Uh, some people in the book call her Mouse, but Ranulph's pet name for her is Little General. And oh, she's although she's not beautiful, she's not one of those, Woe is me, my looks suck. I'm so not pretty. She's not she's not like that at all. She knows it's her practical qualities that get her the hunkiest man around. One thing I hate is when arranged marriages in historicals are approached with an attitude that I won't have sex with you until you love me. For me, that is so phony, so modern-minded. That's not what people did. If they were in arranged marriages, they acted like married people. And uh, fortunately, Raina has no problem looking forward to the marriage bed. And Ranulph has no problem performing his duties. He can, he can do it. Um, unfortunately, he is terrible in the sack. He's a... 32nd wonder if that. Now, I love the fact that Ranulph is an oaf in bed. He visits a prostitute to listen to advice on how to please Raina. He wants, he wants to be able to last longer and actually give his wife pleasure. And his lust is too great to let him last longer than I said of just a few seconds. But unfortunately, Raina catches him in a very compromising situation. And you know, Ranulph just shrugs it off. He doesn't apologize to her. If he had just asked her for advice, he didn't say it in practice. So why should he be sorry? And it's his wife, and only his wife he wants. And the results of his lessons when he goes back are incredibly memorable. <sighs> there are so many enjoyable scenes in this one. Uh, there's Ranulph's reaction when Theo, Raina's gay male attendant, bathes him. It's kind of priceless the way he acts. You know, I know some people might think of it a little bit homophobic, but it, for its time period, it's just funny. Ranulph's kindness to a club-footed young boy who's bullied is something so sweet, so delightful, makes me sigh and makes me filled with girlish glee. And I adore cats. I really do. I have five of them right now. There's nothing sexier than a man. Well, than a man who loves cats. I really just adore that. And Ranulph has this beloved kitty named Lady Ella. If like me, you own cats. You may be familiar with the experience of waking up to a warm fur ball laying on your chest, the tail up, butt right in your face. You know, they want you to... It's a kitten trait. They always stick their butts in your face. They really like you. And this is what Ranulph's little queen cat does to Rena. Though uh, it's a little worse than just sticking her butt in your face. Her face. It's a lot worse than that. It's a riot. 
So saving the best for last, let's talk about the cover. I adore this piece of artwork. It is an absolute work of art. It's camp, it's dazzling, and it is created by the legendary Lane Duillo. So backed by a purple pink sky, as we can see, it features a blonde Fabio looking like Prince Adam of Eternia in a white poofy shirt that drapes off his shoulders, bearing his massive pecs and biceps. And he's got these ridiculous purple tights that just cling to his bulging muscles. And there's that uh, female model. I believe her name is Cindy Geyer. And she's always posing alongside Fabio. This time her hair is flowing in raven black. And her fingers are clutching Fab's purple thighs. Now at the same time, she's sporting this sexy, sexy red dress that shows more boobies than most infants see in their first month of life. Um, which is funny because Rain is supposed to have these itty bitty titties and that was an extreme major exaggeration on DeWillow's part. So I think that was just a really great thing. I love this cover. It is my favorite cover of any romance novel of all time. Now, a long gentle rogue, um, which is a fabulous book. The second, uh, I'm sorry, the third, I believe, in her Mallory series. And uh, it features James Mallory. It's an absolute fantastic book. I would recommend this book after Define Up the Heart. Um, I don't know if it's as good, but uh, it's definitely, definitely uh, a wonderful book to read. The Magic of You, which is the uh, fourth book, I believe, in the Mallory series. It features a female Mallory, Amy Mallory. Mary, uh, she wants to marry Warren Anderson, who is her uncle-in-law. He's much older than her. This is another one of my favorite Johanna Lindsay books. Um, maybe not quite as good as Gentle Rogue, but just a smidgen, smidgen right under there. And lastly, Secret Fire. Uh, this is one of the first Johanna Lindsay books that I read about a kind of, another again, another plain-looking heroine who gets kidnapped by a Russian prince and she's fed Spanish fly and becomes insatiable and the prince has to satisfy her. And only he can do it, of course. <laughs> and anyway, all these books, they account for my favorite Johanna Lindsay books. And there are a lot of really great ones to choose from. But again, like I said, to find out the hard, this book is amazing. So every year two three i pull out define out the heart and it's one of my favorite books to reread i would recommend checking your brain at the door simply just appreciating the ride don't expect literary perfection but you if you're in a goofy frame of mind you will have an absolute blast reading about two silly characters that make you fall in love with them just as they do with each other. And I think this is just a wonderful book, and I would recommend it to any romance lover. Okay, so that has been our review of Define Out the Heart. If you want to check out some more reviews, review historical rom romances, vintage category romances, vintage contemporary romances, at our website, sweetsavageflame.com. And uh, uh, come, drop a comment, and let's talk romance. All right, so next time. See you next time. Goodbye.